Hey, how's it going, everybody? So in this video, I want to talk about Samsung and their you know, BT 2020, um, as well as the color space or color gamut auto switching and explain why it's not actually broken and why it hasn't been. Um, so first, so you can uh, get an idea of what I'm talking about, if you haven't been keeping up on this, um, with Samsung TVs, there's a color space setting and on auto, it's going to default in HDR to DCI P3. Uh, this is not really the way that it should work. Um, however, the auto naming is also a little odd and it makes some people think that it's broken uh, when in reality it's not actually broken. Um, so I had some time that I spent with uh, some Samsung engineers and uh, had a discussion about this. Um, as well as BT2020. So let me uh, play this for a second. This is my settings video from S95C. And so while auto is the default setting and it defaults to P3, you can see there's normal, native, and custom. So if you want to set it to BT2020, you have to go to custom and then change it to BT2020. And that's the only way to get to BT2020. Whereas if it's left in auto out of the box, it will stay in the DCI P3 setting. So to explain this a little bit more, we're going to switch over now to explain the difference between DCI P3 and BT2020. Uh, so hopefully this will come across the video well enough. Uh, let me try zooming in a little bit. Maybe that will help. Um, but the idea is for you to see this right here. So this is a CIE color chart. And essentially, uh, you know, all visible colors would be the whole thing. Um, Rec 709, which is SDR, is this inner triangle here. So that's in orange. Then we have various other uh, color spaces that don't really apply to video so much, like the Adobe and Photo. so you can kind of ignore those. Um, we're going to just be looking at 709, P3, and Rec 2020, so orange, green, and purple. So you can see the smallest inner triangle is 709, then P3 is a bit larger here in this green one, and then Rec 2020 is the largest that we have for displays, and you can see if you go to the end points that it couldn't go any larger without going outside of the range. Uh, now obviously in a different uh, you know, way you can, like this one, the pro photo does go outside. But again, for video, our target right now for HDR is to be able to reach all of Rec 2020, also called BT 2020. Um, if you look here under primaries, you can see the coordinates for red, green, and blue for Rec 2020. So that, that means, you know, red would be the farthest point right here. Green would be the farthest point here and blue, the farthest point down here. And if I go back to the P3 page, we can see the primary coordinates. Uh, now, there's a few different ones. There's display, theater, and cinema, but let's just look at display. I mean, they're all the same here anyway for the primary colors. Uh, so when you look at most UHD discs, and if you have something like a Panasonic Blu-ray player, you can hit the info button, and it will show you the metadata of that disc. Now, in there, you're going to see the metadata for the primary colors and their coordinates. And most of them are going to have these coordinates. So this seems to have confused some people. Um, the metadata that shows up on you know, the disk information really doesn't matter, not even for the luminance. Um, so if it shows P3 primary coordinates, it does not mean that the entire movie is in P3. It's just talking about the display that was used to grade the movie uh, what it was targeting. Uh, so it can be targeting P3, but it can still go beyond P3. So there is no need to have the TV switch its color gamut uh, between P3 and Rec 2020 or BT 2020. All HDR content is in BT 2020. None of it is delivered in P3. What happens is when they are grading, they understand that at least currently, uh, most display types cannot show all or most of BT2020. 
So they keep everything within the P3 or try to keep everything within this P3 triangle. Now I say try to because sometimes there's accidents and things go outside of P3 um, or sometimes they just actually do want it to go outside of P3. Either way, it does not matter what the metadata says on the disk. And it, the TVs themselves are not switching between a P3 and a BT2020 mode. Uh, not really sure where that idea came about. Um, so if we go back to this, when we see in, on the Samsungs, and you have P3 and BT2020, when it says it's in auto, it is not going to auto switch out of P3 into 2020. That's not how it works. So talking with Samsung, they said auto is working how they want it to work in that it, the whole TV will just stay in P3 for all HDR content. And then it will just make sure that all the HDR content that's delivered to the TV is only shown in P3. And that's what they mean by auto. So it's a different way of looking at it uh, from their perspective. And when asked why not use BT2020, their answer is, well, what uses BT2020? And, you know, that may have been a better response um, a few years ago, but, you know, there's quite a bit of BT2020 content now, especially in like video games uh, or movies like uh, Into the Spider-Verse. Um, th there's a handful of movies out there that actually go beyond P3 for a large portion of the movie. So we are at the point, especially with the QD OLEDs, that there is no reason for them to be using the P3 out of the box. Um, the problem, though, is when you do select the BT2020 mode, uh, it's not very accurate. Um, their BT2020 option here will be oversaturated. So when you do want the TV in BT2020, the P3 colors should still be accurate. And all right, so we'll just use this. All right, so with the white in the center, let's say you were going for red and you want to uh, do 20% saturation sweep. So you just pretend, you know, there's five boxes here between white and red. And with the P3 setting on the Samsungs, they're pretty close of hitting, you know, those boxes. And, and it's not bad uh, using the green triangle. But then if you were to check the purple triangle, the BT2020, uh, then it doesn't go far enough because it just stops here. It stops at the edges of this green triangle. Um, whereas if you set into BT2020, it will go further into the BT2020 triangle. But now the P3 measurements will be off. So let me pull up a uh, sweep right here. Okay. All right. So this is an S95C out of the box in game mode. If you were to do a what's P3 sweep inside of a BT2020 triangle, which is kind of the goal. This is what you want to be accurate. Uh, so you can see out of the box in game mode, it's a little oversaturated, but you can see that the primary points are pretty much hitting the boxes where they should be. And then if we went to a 2020 sweep, you can see how it's it's not able to even come close to those outer boxes. Uh, if we go to the gamut measurements, you can see you do get 91% of BT2020 coverage when you are selecting the BT2020 color space option. You are stuck in P3. It doesn't go outside of P3, and that gives you 75. You can see 75%. If you are in P3, P3, this green triangle covers, well, let's call it 76, 76% 76 of BT2020. So on, say, WRGB OLED panels, those have approximately 76% of BT2020 because in reality, they just do P3 and that is it. They don't go outside of P3. So if you had, say, red paint on a Ferrari or something in a movie that might be somewhere over here, outside of the green triangle, a WRGB display would not be able to show that color of red. It would go as far as it can and then stop. Farthest point of you know, red right here and for P3 right here, they'd, if you were to start and draw a line from white, they're a little bit different, not just in how far out they go, but also their hue. Now, obviously, not everything, there's a whole lot of red area, there's a whole lot of green area. You can see 709 SDR still takes up a large portion of the color, 
and most of the color that you see even in hdr is going to fall within the 709 sdr triangle so it's not often that you're getting real hdr color but when you do um, then it's even less often when you get 2020 but we are starting to get it and when we do and the display can't show it then you know that's not accurate so another thing I want to touch on real quick um, is I've been getting some messages about ratings saying that this has been fixed. Uh, so they're claiming here that it's now fixed. Uh, however, it's not. Again, there's one, nothing to fix. It's working how Samsung wants it to work and how they say that it should work. And also nothing has literally changed, even going by the measurements that they provide here and here. When we look at their measurements with it in auto, it's going to be P3. And so this is with measuring P3. And then you can ignore the normal and the native. And then we come down to custom. And again, it's exactly the same as auto, which is how it's always been. And then when we go to Rec 2020, because they are still using auto, you can see that it's only going to the P3 range. It is not, it is the same as if you went down here to custom P3. It's literally the same chart like it looks exactly the same there's no difference here but then when you do look at say normal or native you see that it is able to hit that further box out there and it can go higher up here and it gets closer to here and if you were to measure bt 2020 i don't know why they didn't do custom bt 2020 if they did they would have seen that nothing has changed uh, it is still the same that it's been so i'm kind of bewildered at the statement um, because it's nothing changed just want to show that with some adjustments, you can get the BT2020 mode to be accurate, uh, even with the P3 measurements. So now here is a after calibration using BT2020 option. Uh, you can see we can get errors down to an average of just over one. Uh, I see most of this lines up well. And, you know, the, that brings up a further discussion of having the best looking charts with the lowest errors doesn't actually mean it's the most accurate, but it's a good guideline. And so using this as a guideline, we can see with BT2020, we can actually get it in place where it should be. And this is kind of representative of how Samsung needs to have the BT2020 mode out of the box. It doesn't need to be perfectly accurate, but it needs to be in a much better place than it is when measuring P3. All of this area on the right that shows in red is where BT2020 or where the color is beyond P3 anyway. You can see that as shown up here in the top right where it is going outside of that P3 triangle. And then here we see the actual image. You can see where I toggle it back and forth between 2020 and P3. And you can see there's quite a drastic difference. And that's because again, with the P3, can't actually get the real red that's being shown. Now, another issue with the BT2020 is if you just turn down the color saturation setting on the TV, then there's gonna be a little extra magenta, uh, especially in skin tones. Now, most people won't notice, won't care about this. Um, however, with the CMS controls, uh, while they are not as granular as they should be and they don't quite work as you know they typically should, uh, you are able to work with them. So normally I don't share, you know, advanced settings because they really don't work panel to panel, even in this case. Um, however, with the BT2020 option, you can at least share them and try them and they can move things in a better direction. Uh, so these are the color settings for BT2020 that I would use on the S95C or S90C uh, if you're not getting a real calibration done uh, just to try and see if it makes it better. So we can see the color is turned down uh, both in movie and game and the S90C and 95C are both different. Uh, so that's why there's different settings for both. You can see we are in color space BT2020 for both movies and games. And the G1 tint means putting tint towards green by one click. I have found that this helps on most of the panels that I've seen, but not all of them. Uh, so if that doesn't look quite right, or if you don't like it, whatever, just leave the tint at zero. Um, however, most of the ones that I've seen, G1 uh, does help. So then 
with the custom BT2020 set in the options. You go to the CMS and you only need to change the primaries, red, green, and blue. You don't need to worry about the secondaries, cyan, magenta, or yellow. You just leave those at default. And you may also notice that for each of these settings, uh, there is one option left at the default 50, uh, which generally seems to work well uh, when messing with the CMS on these. So for red in movie mode on the S95C, you would set the red option under red to 68, the green option to 75, and the blue to 50. That's how the CMS works on Samsung, and then so on. And you can do, and it's, I put movie here. That's not the picture mode. That's just the type. So whether it's filmmaker or movie doesn't matter. And then picture type for game. Uh, so when you're in HDR game mode, then you'd use you know the options here. It. So that's my settings that you can try out on the CMS for using BT2020 on the S95C and 90C. Um, not sure if the 90C would be similar enough to the 95B, uh, then try it and see. Um, but again, none of this is going to be as good as having it calibrated properly on your own display in the first place. Um, and there is a wide variance of out-of-the-box white points as well. So that is also going to influence this um, and how it looks. However, you know, I, there's been a lot of requests to see this, and I do recommend using the BT2020 option, uh, even if you don't use the CMS settings and you just turn the color down and the tint, and if you just use this part right here, um, you will get less posterization than in P3, um, and you'll have more, basically more crayons in the crayon box for when they're called for. Uh, as far as all the other settings, they're the same as the previous settings video. Uh, this is just for those who want to take the extra step to get the better color performance out of the TV rather than using the default P3. Bottom line, the auto color space function on Samsung's is not broken, has not been broken. It is working the way that they have intended. After speaking with them for a while, showing them how the 2020 option should be the go-to by default option with a better calibrated out-of-the-box mode, um, it does, it seemed anyway, that they're going to take that feedback and hopefully at some point in the future, whether it's a year or two from now, uh, implement that change because it does allow them to show more colors than they can if they leave it in the P3 option. Again, nothing has changed. No firmware update has changed the way that it works. It doesn't, it's unlikely that will happen because again, it's working the way that Samsung wants it to work where it just keeps the TV in P3 and makes the content, you know, only show what the TV can do in that P3 mode. Um, and let's say on a Sony, if it's the color space is set to auto, it is not going to switch between P3 and BT2020. It, that's not how it works. It is always in BT2020 for all HDR content. Um, so that's how it should work on all the other displays as well. So, all right. I hope this helped you out. I thank you all for watching, and uh, I'll see you all again soon in another video.